Hello and welcome to Grid Down Comms Up. One of our viewers asked a question about how to connect your radio to a computer. Well, that's a great beginner question. A lot of us just kind of assume everyone already knows how to do that, and that is not the truth. Many people are unsure of how to make this work. So we're going to take a look at a couple of options today about how to configure and set your radio up with a computer. Now, the first thing I'm going to say about this before we get into it is I am actually not going to show my daily driver HF radio. It's an ICOM 7300 and it has a USB connection on the back and all you do is run a USB cable from the back of the radio to your computer and that USB cable handles the audio and it handles the cat control or the radio control to change frequencies, operate the push to talk, do all of those things. So I encourage you, if you are new to ham radio, you are looking at what gear to buy and you are looking to get started in digital modes and that's one of the priorities you have, go ahead and buy a modern radio that has a USB sound and USB cat control built into it like the ICOM 7300 or the Yaesu uh, 710 or any of the other radios out there that offer that functionality, because while it may be tempting to buy a 20 year old radio that has, uh, that's a little cheaper, but it doesn't have all of the things you need to connect and do digital modes without adding external equipment. It's going to increase the cost and complexity and as a new person, it's a lot easier to have a much more turnkey solution out of the box than have to build custom interfaces and do all the things that we had to do 20 years ago to make this work. So save yourself a lot of headache if you're new to radio and just go ahead and get something that's going to out of the box, do what you need for HF. However, if you're doing other things, we'll look at some options to do that. And with VHF and UHF, your 2 meter, your 70 centimeter bands, there's not a lot of radios that have the built-in options to do that. There are a few coming out now that will do Bluetooth and that kind of thing, but most aren't. So we're going to take a look at first here, probably the simplest solution. The simplest solution is a radio and your computer or your tablet. And this only works if you're running FL Digi. Uh, it, or another application that does not require a handshake between the radios. If you don't understand what that means, don't worry right now. But it just means it's a one-way transmission that requires no acknowledgement automatically back from the other radio. And all you really have to do with certain modes is hold the radio next to the tablet or the computer and let the microphone hear the audio, and it will decode the text. Uh, very simple. Uh, very easy. You can also do the same thing with a shortwave radio, like this little ATS-20, and receive HF communications that way. If you don't have a license, if you uh, haven't bought an HF radio yet, you're on a tight budget, if you put a good antenna up outside, you can take one of these radios and a computer and you'll be able to decode a lot of the HF digital traffic uh, that is sent via FL message uh, just acoustically. You need to be in a quiet room. If it's a loud room, it doesn't work quite as well, but in a quiet room, it works works just fine. So those are that's the dirt simple uh, option that there's kind of the, the no excuses option as it was. And I'll actually put some digital audio at the end of this video for you guys that maybe want to experiment with that. And all you have to do is fire up FL Digi and listen at 1500 on the waterfall, and you should get uh, some decode of the message that I, I kind of put at the end of this. Now, if you want to take this another step further, this is the next simple option. Uh, this is just a cable that allows you to connect a handheld, like this Anytone, uh, to your tablet. Uh, or to your laptop, if your laptop happens to use the tip ring ring sleeve connector for you know a single port for a headset. Uh, if it doesn't, you'll just have to get the adapter so that you can adapt this to your 
your uh, laptop. Uh, they sell them on Amazon. Uh, they're just a few dollars to get the one that breaks it out from uh, the tip ring ring sleeve to a, a mic and uh, headphone connection, very similar to what uh, we had on older PCs. And if your PC doesn't have a sound card at all on it, there are very inexpensive $10 Sabrent sound cards that you can pick up off Amazon to get a good sound card in and out of your computer that will do what you need. Uh, so no need to, to spend a bunch of money on that. So that's the simple way of just connecting your HT to your computer. If you want to do short range uh, digital communications with FL Digi, um, that's, that, that's really all it takes. And remember, you know, that's really not going to work much further than your handheld would normally work or over a repeater. If the people in your area do uh, digital nets on repeaters uh, and send uh, forms and files over the repeater, uh, you can do that this way as well. Now, I'm going to kind of pause for a second and reset, and I'm going to show you guys another option for interfacing your equipment to your uh, computer. All right, so here I have uh, one of my ICOM mobile radios set up in a man pack configuration. Uh, so I can set this at a picnic table. I can set it uh, in a vehicle, throw a mag mount on top of it, uh, clamp an antenna onto a UTV, do any of those things where I need a little more power than a handheld offers, um, but needs to be in a portable, movable package. So I put this together. These are armor lock rails. Um, you guys can look a little more into that if that's something you're interested in. And I'm using a uh, DigiRig light for this. Uh, this is a, uh, I think these are around 40 bucks. Uh, interface that you can pick up gives you a USB connection and it provides your sound card and your push to talk. And this one, uh, one of the things I like about this particular icon, it's an older icon. I've had several of these icons for going on 20 years and they're still going strong. They actually have a connector that I don't know if you guys can see, maybe you can, right here on the back of the radio uh, that allows you to get audio in and out and push to talk in and out without disconnecting your mic or plugging something into the speaker so you can't hear it. And that uh, allows you to connect audio into that VHF radio and still use it for voice as well. So uh, some of the cheaper radios and other radios don't really offer that function out and you have to come up with the, the right interface cables to get the audio from the speaker and then plug something into the mic connection up front to make it work. But this is a really elegant, um, fairly inexpensive solution for interfacing into your uh, mobile rigs or even a handheld rig. If you have a handheld rig that doesn't have Vox to manage push to talk, or if you want to use a mode like WinLink using Packet or VARA FM, you can use one of these to manage the push to talk on your handheld. Uh, so you can do those ARQ handshake sessions we were talking about. So again, this is a real simple, uh, inexpensive way to get into something for VHF. And uh, the DigiRig guys have a lot of the interface cables that you need to make this stuff work uh, readily available on their website uh, that you can pick up for a reasonable amount of money. So uh, you just plug this, I would just plug this into my laptop uh, and I would be ready to go. Now, while we're talking about a little more power here, I think it's worth mentioning that when doing digital modes and interconnecting computers, especially with handheld radios, but also with portable setups like this where the antenna and the computer are in close proximity, you have to be aware of making sure that there is enough distance between your antenna and your computer because if you get RF, if the, the transmitting uh, radio frequency energy gets into the USB cables or the audio cables, it can cause you a lot of problems. So having a little bit of distance and a little bit of space is, uh, is important there. And it doesn't have to be a lot. But if you set your handheld on the table right next to your uh, radio in your, or your uh, laptop and you're running five watts, you may have some issues with RF, especially considering that most handheld antennas are, are pretty abysmal 
and have a tendency to get RF back into the radio pretty bad. Uh, that can easily be resolved by tossing a J-pole up in a tree or using a, another antenna option uh, kind of in the tree. So we've kind of shown this method of interconnecting and I'm gonna grab one more setup here and I'm gonna show you guys one more option uh, that I use with some external interface stuff to interface to a laptop. So uh, be right back with that. So this is a DigiRig Mobile. This actually passes not only audio and push to talk, but it passes audio and the serial data for the cat control. So I can change frequencies and adjust settings uh, and do all of those things in my radio uh, through the single USB port. And I like the DigiRig for my little KX2 transceiver here, which you have to have separate connections for your mic, your headphones, and then for your cat control that in this case plugs into the little accessory jack here. This was an elegant solution that was quick to set up to put into the field. Prior to this, I was using one of those little $7 sound cards and the cat cable that came with the radio, but that took up two USB ports and made a lot of cable spaghetti that just wasn't quick to set up. So this one is much quicker because I just have to plug these three cables in right quick, plug this into my laptop, and I am ready to go. So this is another option, and you can get your DigiRigs configured for whatever type of radio uh, that you're going to use it with. But that's another way to get audio in and out of your computer. And you just have to make sure when that you do that, that your levels are set correctly in FL Digi and your other applications. And I'll probably do a quick video at some point on setting levels in the software and, and how to do that with your radio and get all of those levels set correctly so that everything works effectively and decodes effectively. So that's a handful of ways that you can interface your radios to your computer. Just be a simple USB cable, makes for a very nice and neat uh, field operations setup. In fact, for regional communications, this laptop, this interface, my little QRP radio, little, uh, in-fed halfway 49 to 1 ballon and a roll of wire is quite adequate to make communications over mountain ranges and to pretty rugged terrain covering one to two maybe 300 miles using digital modes you probably depending on band conditions you may or may not be able to do that with it was voice, but with digital, it's very easy uh, to do that. And sometimes a lot further. I've worked across the ocean with just 10 watts before, though that I wouldn't consider dependable enough for an emergency situation. In, uh, you know, in your region, your state, uh, with digital, you can probably do it with just 10 watts and a kit this simple. Uh, I haven't weighed this recently, but, um, if I remember correctly, this is less than five pounds. Um, in fact, I'll be right back. I'll weigh it. Okay, just weighed it. It weighs in at approximately four pounds uh, for all of the stuff that I need to communicate uh, in a several hundred mile region. Of course, if you add some extra batteries, solar panels, all that stuff starts adding up, but the core base of the equipment is about four pounds. So not light if you're on foot, but also certainly doable. I've hiked uh, quite a few miles with this arrangement uh, to make a quick, quick communications window, uh, including a little fiberglass mask that adds maybe another half pound to it. Those are some ways to get set up and get going. Uh, there's lots of radio options out there. Uh, there are also options for, um, if you're a DIY type, where you can build your own interfaces. This is a small interface that you can get the kit for, for about 12 bucks off of Amazon, or not Amazon, but off of eBay and put it together, it requires some sort of push to talk command from the computer. 
using either a serial to USB adapter or uh, if you're using a Raspberry Pi, you can actually use a GPIO pin from the Raspberry Pi to manage push to talk. And it requires a sound card like one of the little $10 Sabrents to get audio in and out of the computer. Uh, but I have used these uh, on my WinLink gateway and in a couple of other applications uh, just as a easy little isolation between the radio and the computer. So uh, that's that's another option if you like to homebrew stuff. A lot of a lot of folks end up having to homebrew some of the digital interfaces. But again, if you use a little bit more modern equipment, you can reduce the amount of futzing and homebrewing that you have to do if that's not your thing. The other thing that I encourage you to look at is equipment that is robust, rugged, and serviceable. The uh, the, the tend or trend at times is to go towards some of the cheaper stuff. Uh, and I say that while I have a $90 Evolve laptop setting here. Uh, so uh, there are certain places to cheap out on, but there's other things where the, making sure that you have you know good quality gear that's not going to cause you problems in the field. Because I assure you when that you're not at home uh, will be when that it will break. I, uh, I encourage you guys to get out in the field and practice this stuff because sitting at home in the shack all the time will... Uh, doesn't really lend itself towards the troubleshooting and the setup, tear down over and over uh, skills that are needed to make this stuff work in an emergency. Because in an emergency, things are not going to be normal. That's the definition of an emergency. That said, I hope this helps some of you guys who are getting started with some of the interface and interconnect options. It's really just a USB sound card and what's needed to connect it to your radio or uh, like we discussed before, you can acoustically couple to listen uh, and to transmit. You just hold the radio up to the speaker on your laptop, hold the push to talk uh, on the radio and play the audio back. Uh, and that works with uh, some modes such as uh, MP63, some of the slower MFSKs, Contestia. Uh, if you don't know what those are, just look in your list of modes in FL Digi and you'll see a lot of those. Some of the higher speed modes like the 8PSKs and that kind of thing really need to be wired uh, to the radio to work well. Uh, they don't acoustic couple very well, but that's the price you pay for a lot more speed. So, that said, I hope that this was helpful. You guys have a wonderful day and uh, get on the air. And right after this, I'll play back a little bit of audio in MT63 2K long at 1500 on the waterfall. You know what that means. If you don't, open your FL Digi up uh, on your laptop and make sure that it's hearing the audio that's playing back from the video. Set your window uh, on the waterfall to 1500 and set your sound settings to MP63 2KL for long. Uh, and it should decode the little message I'm gonna put at the end of this. So 7-3 guys, have a great day.